of a, we can explain. All right, so exploded view. All right, let's, let's just back up all the way. Let's talk about piping. Can you oversize a liquid line? No. Could I put a five inch liquid line on this one ton system? Yep. If I had a receiver big enough and, a, and, and, a, and enough refrigerant, yes, I could. And it's going to work just fine. Why? Because I have sub cooling, hopefully, if my condenser is working properly. And all I've got to have is liquid that feeds my TXV. That's it. If I've got liquid that feeds my TXV, it's going to work. I can have a I can have a freaking liquid line the size of this room, theoretically. If I've got liquid hitting my TXV, it's going to work. Right? Can I undersize my liquid line? Can I run a quarter inch or can I run like a quarter inch liquid line to any system I want to? No. Why? Because you won't feed your TXV. Because you won't feed your TXV. You don't have enough liquid volume to feed your TXV. Okay. So, so we can't oversize our, our liquid line. We can undersize our liquid line. Can we oversize our suction line? Can I put a five inch suction line on this system? No. Why? Because your velocity would change. Because my velocity would change. Can I undersize <laughs> my suction line? Can it be too small? Yes. Yes, it can. Okay. Same reason. So, so there's two things that matter when you're piping a system. Velocity, pressure drop. Okay, now when we used to do grocery stores, we would shoot for, and, and most systems, like when I design a system, I'm designing a system, I want to be less than two PSI of pressure drop. Okay, if I've got more than two PSI of pressure drop, we've got a, a, an issue. Okay, so when we're sizing new systems, we're looking for two PSI of pressure drop. Okay, so pressure drop and velocity. Now, you give me a line if you want me to tell you all of the exact numbers because I don't remember them all off the top of my head. But we've got to have a certain amount of velocity in our refrigeration system to return oil to the compressor. The only place that we need oil in the refrigeration system is the compressor, right? We don't want oil anywhere else. But because of the, the nature of refrigerant, the refrigerant picks up oil to some degree and it, and it lubricates the whole system. Okay, but we've got to get that oil back. Right? So what happens is you have an evaporator, and let's say this is a, a side view, whatever, and that oil is coming back on our suction line, because our suction line is going back towards our condenser, and that oil gets in here. Right? And, 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 and we have to have a certain amount of, we have to have enough velocity to get that oil back up and to our condenser. What eventually ends up happening, and the reason that we have P-traps is because this oil gets in here, and 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 eventually it causes a restriction. And it fills up the P-trap, okay? And what it does, the system, with the amount of velocity that we have, sucks this oil back up that P-trap, okay? So, if we had a suction line that was really, really big, Right? If we had a suction line that's like this, we're, we can't create enough velocity to get the oil up. Right? So the oil comes up and then it trickles back down. It comes up and trickles, trickles back down. Make sense? Okay. So. In this case that we're talking about. We've got an evaporator over here. And we've got an evaporator over here. We're coming out of this evaporator because they're both just on the wall. We're, and we're, we're coming out and elbowing over <coughs> to the wall, right? <coughs> and they're, they're. FYI, this is going to be. I don't know. It's okay. I did, I did, I, Look, I, I, I need more to do the. Uh, above the deal. We win as a team, we fail as a team. This, if, if you guys learn this and we know it and we don't do this again, 
I'm tickle pink. All right, this is not about signing blame, it's about learning. That's it. So, these evaporators are here. They're, they're both coming out, that's about, that's, that's about level. And what we have is this. We have this, this one that's coming and going like that, right? And then this one is going like that. Problem number one that I suspect, I don't know, but I suspect this is an issue, is if both of these evaporators are the same model of evaporator and they're both mounted at the same height walk-in, and this suction line is coming in on top of this T here, tells me that this suction line is sloping back towards that evaporator to some degree, right? That's a problem. Why? Because our oil needs to get back to our compressor, right? Which means every, every line that we put in has to slope towards our condenser. Okay, every one of them is always going to be sloping towards the condenser. Uh, okay, so we have this and we take and put a P-trap right here, like that. And we have a T here. Just don't love that. I don't know that I don't know that this is gonna work. And here's why, because if we're filling up this system with oil, or this P-trap with oil, right, and then we're and then we're dumping in here. And we've got the least resistance. Well, the oil, the oil is definitely gonna come in here, right? And it's gonna <laughs> fill up. The problem is, is once it starts going up, it's going to go back in the middle. Yeah, I don't know that it's not going to just go right back in here. Right. Right? Um, and I don't, I don't know. I wish I, could t I wish I could tell you, but... But you have pressure on the suction side. We have pressure on the whole suction line. Yeah. To back up to the condensing. I don't think it's, it's going to really flow very well. Yes. If you have this, I don't think it's going to flow very well. Oil's heavier than the gas. Okay. That oil is gonna, it, it's not gonna get, it's not, it's, it's gonna tend to go this way, right? The other thing is this, and this is what my real problem is, is we're flooding oil this direction, right? And so this oil is gonna wanna fall down. And as this oil wants to fall down, this oil is trying to come up, we're creating this turbulence right here that probably isn't right. So, I don't know. so could we do this? Like, T over here and bring this over here like that. I put it up on top. Right. Yeah. Yes, you could do that. Here's what you'd have to do. You'd have to make sure that you have an inverted P trap up here, so that when the oil comes here and goes to the, this, the oil doesn't just drop back out. Right. So you have to have an inverted P trap here to keep the oil from dropping back down, because then again, all you're gonna do is flood out this evaporator. But yes, what you're saying, you absolutely could. If this, if you didn't have a T here, if you just have this P-trap, and it goes up, and then this system comes up and goes over, and you want to tie it up on top, great. But you've got to make sure that you've got an inverted trap to keep the oil from this evaporator from going back down here, where you make your connection. Make sense? I like two section lines going in a T, and then P-trap, and going up. The best way to do this. So let's start. Let's start with the best way to do it. The best way. Let's just go that way. The best way to do it is this. Both of them come in. Both of these are sloping this way. You have a P trap here. <clears throat> that goes up. That way your oil from here comes in, your oil from here comes in, they both mingle here, they drop down, this fills up, and your oil goes back. That is the best way to do it. That's now in the situation that you're in over here, you're a little constrained, right? It's a little tight. I think we can just do it that way. Actually, no. I think we can do it like that. You can still do that. We can do that because we can turn the P-trap that's what I'm so saying. Make the suction line. What we'll do is we'll take the stubs off of the 
evaporator short them, which pulls us away from the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that, and that's what I'm saying. Like the least, in, the least evasive way. I don't know what the least evasive way is on a system that it's already running. We just need to get freaking heat trap in there. Okay, this is the best way to do it, and that's what I was saying. Is is you know the P trap can turn, right? Like all you need is two inches of space between this this line and this line for your for your insulation, all right? So well, and then also give us a chance to extend that horizontal so that way we don't have any slope. All the slope is going to that P trap. Yes. And we can actually well, yeah, because again, because again, we get the oil away from that. Looking at the picture that I'm seeing over here, it looks like you're sloping that yeah. towards the evaporator on the left hand side. The leg is sloping down. That can be done. Yeah, easily. If you can do this, this is the best way to pipe it. That's There's not a better way to pipe this system than this. So if you can do that, go do it. Make that happen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. You can't if you put a P trap here. And then went over, it doesn't do you any good. Right? Because all you're doing is just taking this oil and holding it here when it could just flow that way. Right? So a key indicator is whenever you see a system that has an evaporator up in the air and a condenser on the ground, if your line set doesn't go up, whoever installed it's an idiot. Because they clearly don't understand how the oil is supposed to flow in a system. Right? I've ran into systems where I put <laughs> Huge evaporator. People have no business doing the install. P trap over down P trap and into a condenser outside on the ground. How does it, does it? Oil flows downhill, right? Like, <laughs> you don't need these P traps. It's just, just go straight. You can just go straight the whole way. It'll be all right. It'll work. But, so, but anytime that you have, anytime that you go vertically, you need a P trap. I don't care whether it's two feet, 10 feet. If you're going vertically, if you're going up, you need a P trap. Okay? If you have a, if you're going up, if you're going straight up for a long time, and again, you're going to get different opinions from everybody. Everybody's got a different opinion on this. Every, go look at every manufacturer. They're all going to say something different. It's been, I, last time I researched it, I was like, yeah, nobody has, nobody, like the refrigeration world has not come to a consensus on at how, at how often you should put a P-trap on your vertical ratchet. I personally, I think 15 feet is great. Right? So if this is 20 foot, if this is a 20 foot rise and you have a P trap here, right, and this is your and this is your this is your roof line right here, then when you're at 15 feet, you need another P trap right here. So you go So go like that. And so when you guys are planning this kind of stuff out and you're piping this kind of stuff, you need to think about that. Oh, I've got, I've got this extra 15 feet or whatever, or, I, or I'm gonna have to put a P-trap in the middle of my line set somewhere. Don't make your penetration straight up because you've got your P-trap that's gotta go somewhere. Right? Which is gonna offset wherever, wherever your penetration is. So you've got to make sure that that penetration. Now, I have, we have also done some where we've had such a long freaking line run that, you know, we went up another 15 feet and then did another P trap, which was beautiful because then it put me back where I needed to be and then I was in a straight line. I like that because I think straight lines are pretty. But, but, you know, if you have one here and then you got a 20 foot riser at 15 feet, I'm putting in another one. Okay. And also, if I've got something like this where I am going up for a long way at the top here, guys, I'm also putting in an inverted trap. I'm a fan of inverted traps. I don't care that they cost extra money. We'll pay for it. Because it's going to make the system, it's just, refrigeration is complicated enough, and if there's less things that you have to worry about, I don't have to worry about oil return. I know that oil is not the issue in this case. Cool, it's one thing you can check off the box. 
Yes, right? Sir. And when and when the install is done right from the beginning, it solves such a myriad of problems for everybody down the road. Yes, sir. Cool. Does that make sense? 